Welcome back to another fictionalhead.com essential training. This series is dedicated to topics I feel are essential to understand the software we use as designers. Uh, today's essential to topic or tip for InDesign is on using the text frame options. And I've covered this one before in a quick tutorial, so I figure I'll just port it over here to make sure that it gets captured as a part of the essential training because I feel like it's a very essential tip to using InDesign. Say you were laying out an element such as this in InDesign, or even like a button. Uh, a lot of times people will drag out their text frame, get their text. Let's just say we copied and pasted this from a content document. We'll just say that's what our text is. Um, a lot of times people will mess with these options here under paragraph as for centering, left justified, right justified, things like that. Uh, and leave it there. And then if they had an element such as this that the text needed to be centered in, they would just uh, constrain their box. I'm hitting uh, Control Alt C there, but that's just to get it to snap the frame to the content. And then if you have smart guides turned on, you can kind of drag it up and down, center it within the box, bing, bang, boom. And whoops, click the wrong thing there. Uh, call that good. Uh, the only issue with doing it this way is if your content changes, like say later on we remove some bullets, which frequently happens through the design process, now your content is no longer centered. You have to readjust that box, drag it back down, get it centered again. It's just more steps for you. So what I found an easier way to do that is just to utilize the uh, text frame options in InDesign which allow you to think of your design more like rules, uh, kind of the way you would when you're designing it. So if you type in all your content, you can right click on it and go to text frame options here in InDesign. And he, these settings here are frequently overlooked because they're kind of hard to get to, but the vertical justification can be set to center. And if you do that, we'll turn preview on so it's a little more obvious what's going on here. If you have a bigger box, so say this is your box and you're filling up a rectangle that's larger than what your content is, you can actually just specify the vertical, ju vertical justification and what that will do is define whether or not it aligns to the top of your box, to the center, to the bottom, or justified to fit the whole area. Uh, I frequently use centered because a lot of the designs that I do feature that. Uh, but then to take it a step further, if you go to the baseline options, it'll calculate how should it know what the center point is? Since I'm using capital letters in my design, I'll use the cap height. You probably can't tell there, but it went up slightly. If you use the letting, it goes down because it's using the bottom line of all of the type as the center point. If you use X height, it's using the lowercase letter X height as the center point. And if you use fixed, it just uses a defined quantity that you specify here. Generally speaking, um, ascent, like your ascender or cap height, works the best. Uh, and then, so if you pick center here and cap height here and hit OK, the end result is the same, and it seems like kind of some extra setup just to achieve the same effect. But this way, if anybody ever comes back and deletes a bullet, you're still perfectly centered. Or if you add more, you're still perfectly centered. Uh, it just treats your design more like a set of rules and less like a defined thing that you specifically need to get in there and adjust every time, which can be very helpful to make things go faster. Uh, and by that token, if you're doing other things like buttons or any sort of defined elements that have padding around them, uh, you could do that same thing of specifying a background color and typing it out. But then what if your button changes to a shorter amount of text, like just to say shop? Well, now you've got all this extra space off to the side. You can, again, constrain it. But a quicker way would just be to right-click, go to Text Frame Options, specify that you want it centered, specify your baseline options like we did before. But then you can go to the Auto Size tab and set your auto sizing to whatever you would need. So in this instance, I'm going to pick Width Only. And that will make the width of the box always constrain. Uh, you can define your anchor points if you want it to come in from a certain angle. Uh, I'm personally just going to use centered, so I'm going to hit OK. And now that box is always going to constrain to the width of whatever I type. Give it a second to update. Boom. So now my button's perfect. 
I can always go into the text frame options and make a bigger margin if I need to. So like let's say it's 0.25 all the way around all of my text. There we go. I can say shop and it'll make a perfect button for me. I can change it to shop now, button still adjusts. So by using these options under text frame options, you can really cut out a lot of unnecessary rework for yourself in the sense that you can set up rules uh, similar to how you would think of them in your mind, such as buttons always have 20 pixels of padding and the text is always centered. And by doing that, it just prevents you from having to get in there and tweak a million times if the content is evolving while you design. So that's the tip. If you found it helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you want more of these types of concept videos, be sure to check out others in the Essential Training series. And as always, if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments. See you next time.